an iPad portfolio. Yes, it's got to be done, hasn't it? It's got to be done. Right, you can, of course, take your images onto your iPad and you can demonstrate them in any way you would like. But of course, you have a few problems. Uh, your pictures start life on your iPhone or your camera or your camera card, and they're all different sizes, formats, locations, and you've got to try and merge them all together into a cohesive whole that looks fabulous on your iPad. And it will take you somewhere between forever and even longer. But there is a way to make it really quick and seamless. Trust me, it's beautiful. Right, so what I need first of all are some images which are very, very different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in here um, my file system and I'm actually going to show you what we have in the file system. So I'm zooming in. I have some CR2 images which are Canon RAW files. I have an odd one from Mike there, an RAF file which is a Fuji RAW file which not much will read it. Uh, you would have to use a converter to even be able to see the image. I have lots of JPEGs, but they're all different sizes. Everything from a few K up to 12, 12 there's a bit a bigger, bigger, bigger one still, 26 and a half meg. So if you think about trying to showcase these all at the same size, it would be a nightmare and you'd have to convert half of them as well. So those are the images we're working with in the file system. Just to prove the point here, um, I can preview a CR2 image. So there is my CR2 image previewed in the system. Obviously I can preview any kind of JPEGs, no problem at all. But that Fuji file doesn't want to know. It knows it's a Fuji Camera RAW file and that's as far as you're getting with it. So bear that one in mind. It's actually a picture of the dog. So when it appears, you'll know which one it is. Right, how I'm going to do this, I'm going to use a couple of apps. Um, I'm going to use Bridge on the desktop, which comes with Photoshop, it comes with Creative Suite, and it comes with Photoshop Elements. And I'm going to use on the iPad Goodreader, which I believe is 59 pence. It certainly was when I bought it. And it is amazing. It's worth 10 times that, if not more. Now, the reason I've elected to do that is because I want to do this Oh, I know, I'm demo crazy. I want to do this live on, on the night and I'm going to transfer it wirelessly. Yes, I know, I'm a magician. Right, so I'm going to go into Bridge and I'm not interested in my Hello covers anymore. I'm interested in my source images for my iPad portfolio. Right, first thing to notice, there is the image of the dog. Okay, so Bridge has no problem with the it being a Fuji RAW file. And yes, it was a cold morning in December. So that is my first problem solved. Um, and all the other files, as I've said, they're very, very different. Uh, as you click on an image, you will get over here in your metadata, you will see the size of that in terms of pixels. Uh, different file formats, different sizes, complete nightmare. But you can do this really simply. Now, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to make a PDF. So this PDF could be delivered to a phone, to an iPad, a computer. It makes no difference. But you're not going to have to do much manually at all. So first thing to do, you have um, an interface here. This is the essentials interface. But you can change the interface depending on what you're trying to do. So first thing to do is I want all these images, so I'm going to select them. The next thing to do is to go to the output view. And when I go to the output view, it completely changes my view. It gives me a much bigger preview at the top. Um, in fact, I'm going to refresh that preview because it shouldn't look like that. That's what it should look like. Um, and it has my film strip at the bottom, which are all my images. So if I just wanted to preview one image, uh, these are all selected. They're selected in um, orange edges. All right. So though, those are my images. And this is what my the preview of my PDF looks like. Not good. It's pretty much um, more of um, a printout. So yes, a PDF that I would then print out um, and not bad at all. 
but to show on an iPad, it doesn't look great. It looks like a document. So what you can do is you can go over on the right hand side here and you can make copious changes to these elements. I'm just going to fold them up so they're all categorized and I'll go through them one at a time. But this is what you've got. Now, first thing to decide is, do you want a PDF or do you want a web gallery? Well, the web gallery is flush, so that won't help you on an iPad at all. So let's stick to the PDF. And the first thing to do is to select a template or go through and create your settings yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to create those settings myself because I want to decide what this looks like on my iPad. Now, I have here some uh, presets, none of which are going to do me any good at all. So I'm going into my document and I'm going to start making some changes. Now, first of all, um, page preset A4. Well, it's picked that up because I'm in the UK. But actually, I'd prefer it to be custom where I'm going to go through and make this whole thing manually. So I will have it set like that. I'll also size it in pixels. Now, a bit of an argument here about what works best. Um, through trial and error, I found that a width of 1030, now 1030 is fine, that seems to have no problem. It's the height that seems to uh, be somewhere between 752 and 772. So I'm going to go for 772 and keep everything crossed. Now what you do have, which is a bit odd, so I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see that, you have two different quality settings. You have 300 ppi and then you have a quality underneath. Well, it's for the screen, so having it, oh dear, that jumped. Having it at 300 ppi won't help you at all. You can take that down to 72. But the quality here will affect it, so have that set to 80 or higher. Obviously, the higher you go, the bigger your file size, and I'm trying to transfer this wirelessly live while doing a webinar. I'm crazy. So I'm going to leave that set to 80 rather than 100. Now, at this stage, I can choose to refresh the preview and it changes my preview here. Still not looking brilliant. All it's managed to do is turn it sideways so far. Uh, it would look just like that on the iPad, but it doesn't look like a portfolio, which is what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to carry on making changes here. I want the background to be black. So it brings up my colour dialog and I'm going to choose black. Now I could choose to put an open password or a permissions password, but I'm not going to. And that's my document set up. So let's refresh that. And now we should have a black background. Improved slightly, but not all there yet. So I'm going to go on to the layout. Now this is the most important one. This is where you'll make the most changes. Uh, doesn't really matter what I have set in here because I'm only going to have uh, one row and one column. But I will set that to down first and then I will say one column, one row. Now what that should tell you straight away is that means one image per page. Whereas we have it at the moment, two rows, two columns means four images. Then I'm going to go down to horizontal. I'm going to set that to zero and zero. And then I need to set some margin settings. Now, I had that set to 10, 25, 25, and 25. And that's all I need to do in there. So I'm going to refresh that now. And I should now have one image. So, yep, that is much better. So lose the layout. Don't need to make any changes to the overlays. But I will add a header. And I'll put that header on the left. And I'm going to make the text say Portfolio. And at the moment, even if I refresh that, yes, the image changed size because I put a header on it, but I can't see it. Yes, it's in black. So I need to go in there and change that to white or any other color that would stand out against the black and refresh that. And there I now have portfolio at the top. Now, obviously, I could choose to put their Elaine Giles portfolio. I could put more. I could put less. I could make it bigger. You've got to think how it will interact with the photos. So I won't be making that any bigger, but you can have a play around with it. Now, you could put a footer in if you want, which I don't need. Uh, the playback options are what would happen if this is played on a computer, and we don't want to be worried about that. It's going on an iPad. The one thing that you may decide to do is to add a watermark, particularly if this is going out to a client. So you could go to add watermark, you could say place on each image 
uh, put some text in and maybe put proofs in it something like that um, I'm going to refresh that so you can see it now that's a far too small for a, for a watermark so take that up and then you're literally going to have to keep pressing refresh until you get it just about right so I'd say you could probably take that up to a hundred and you probably do want that rotated to something like 45 degrees and refresh that and the last thing would be it's a watermark so it needs to be much less in your face than that so maybe take it down to just under uh, that's 40 percent so you get the idea with that. I won't bother doing that. Let's have these in all their glory, but that's how you would do it. You can also use an image if you want. So if you have a signature brush or something like that, you can overlay that with it. So I'll take that watermark off and that's all my settings sorted out. So I'm going to refresh that for the last time. Yep, that looks fine. Now all I have to do is actually save that file. So I'm going to choose to save it and it's gone to save it in my Dropbox, in the root of my Dropbox. Now, just to be absolutely certain here, let's have a look. I do not have in there a file called anything at all. They're all folders, uh, all my dirty secrets there, all my apps linked to from my iPad. Um, I don't have any file in there at all. So this is going in there and I'm calling that portfolio. Now I'm showing you that so you know that this file didn't already exist. So portfolio and save it. And it's generating the PDF. Yes, it's sorted. And what should be happening straight away is my Dropbox is working away up here and it's uploading that in the background. And it's saying it's got 25 seconds left or so. So what I will do is open my Dropbox and when it tells me it has finished, which it's getting there, you can see the blue icon. We will need to see a green icon. I noticed when I said I was going to do this demonstration that Dropbox said they were then going to have some downtime. Luckily, midnight our time, although that doesn't look like it's uploading anytime soon. Ah, la -di -da -di -da. There we go. It's done. So I'm going to open that up so you can see it on the desktop. And there it is. So first image, second image, there's the one of the dog with the strange file format. And you can see it says portfolio. Uh, got to have some Apple Store openings in there, haven't you? Absolutely. And on to some other images. So there's, there's what the PDF actually looks like. For my next trick, you need to see that on the iPad. Or are you going to take my word for it? No, I didn't think so. Right, so what I need to do now is um, make some magic so you can actually see it on the iPad. So bear with me. And you should be seeing my iPad. Right, so if you go into Goodreader, that's what Goodreader looks like. And that's what I've got in Goodreader. Now, what you're looking at in the My Documents is not my Dropbox. It's the contents of my Goodreader, uh, which are actually live on my iPad. What you need to do to do this all wirelessly and on the road and oh, very, very clever is to click on Dropbox where it says connect to servers. So you click on Dropbox and it's accessing my Dropbox. And there are all the folders um, that you saw in my Dropbox. So if you scroll up down at the bottom, you have files and you can see their portfolio PDF and you can see the time and date as well. It really was live. So what you need to do is to click on that and you need to sync it. So you hit the sync button at the bottom and then it tells you what you're actually going to do to make sure that you are actually going to do that. So the file you selected will be automatically downloaded and tagged for synchronization. So all you have to do in the future is press the sync button and it will keep it in sync from your Dropbox to Goodreader. So proceed with that. That's absolutely fine. That's what I want to do. And then it needs a location. Where do you want to put this locally? So um, just in the root of Goodreader is fine. So download here and synchronize. Just hit that button at the bottom. You then get this uh, sync parameters. I know this looks horrendously complicated, but note that you're just saying yes, yes, yes to it all. Hit sync at the top. And what should then happen is it's actually syncing it live, downloading the file. 
So it was 3.2 meg. I'm assuming it's still 3.2 meg. It's not telling me how big it is. So scroll up a little bit and you can see what you've got down there now. Portfolio PDF and it has a green icon next to it telling you that that's uh, set for synchronisation. So if I did want to make any changes to it, I'd then resynchronize and it would uh, synchronize down to Goodreader. But to see it, all you've got to do is click on it. Tap once in the middle to lose all the Chrome from Goodreader. And you see you have portfolio at the top and you have your first image. And then literally you showcase your images by using your finger to scroll across. So if we go across to the next one, that was the Mac Expo. So again, and we should find the dog. Yes, there he is. So a file format that mm, even the Mac struggles with, so never mind an iPad, uh, is all taken care of by the magic of bridge. So uh, scroll across again and you can see the other images. So just give it a chance to settle and broadcast to you. My trusty assistant with a nice red dot in the hair. And again. And that's how you can showcase your images uh, straight from your desktop with no conversion, no resizing. Just let the software take care of it and straight down to your iPad.